The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello learners. Welcome to this learning program. I am Ati Janvier, economics teacher. Our lesson is introductory ideas. This is a lower seat arts lesson from microeconomics. In our introduction to lower seat arts economics program, we will be looking at the general presentation, learning outcome, and previous knowledge. Let us start with the presentation of the program. The program of Lower Sea Economics is made up of four models, which are the first one, we have dynamics of resource allocation. The second, we have interaction of market forces. Then the third, dynamics of competition in the market. And lastly, dynamics of the distribution of rewards to factors of production. The first model of our program is dynamics of resource allocation. It has two topics, introductory ideas and economic system. The second model of our program is interaction of market forces. It has three topics, production, price theory, cost and revenue of production. The next model of our program is dynamics of competition in the market. It has one main topic, the theory of the firm. The last model of our program is dynamic of the distribution of reward to factors of production. It has one main topic, theory of income distribution. The first topic, of our program is introductory ideas. It has three lessons. Number one, notions of economics, production possibility curve, and methodology of economics. By the end of this topic, learners should be able to have an understanding of fundamental notions of economics. <laughs> Our first lesson will be on the notions of economics. This lesson will be structured as follows. Definition of economics, basic concepts in economics, importance of economics, branches of economics, tools of economics, and lastly, economics as a science. By the end of this lesson, the student will be able to do the following. To define economics according to the different authors, identify and explain the basic concepts in economics, explain the importance of economics, differentiate between the various branches of economics, identify the tools of economics analysis, and lastly, justify economics as a science. Learners have been able to make rational decisions in satisfying their wants. Now, look at the definition. Now, for the definition, we have so many definitions in economics, which have been presented by many authors. 
And this is because the authors, or the reason for this, authors define economics to reflect their own point of interest. They define economics based on what is happening around them at the point of writing. Therefore, we are going to look at some definitions in economics. Now let's look at the first one. We have Adam Smith, who defines economics as an inquiry into the causes and nature of the wealth of nation. Adam Smith was interested in what can cause a nation to be rich or what can cause a nation to be poor. That is, he was interested in the disparity between the rich and the poor countries in the world. Now let's look at the second definition, John Swart Mills, 1848. He defined economics as the practical science of production and distribution of wealth. John Swart Mills was interested in finding out how or the amount of wealth that is possessed by an individual or how wealth is produced in in a society and shared amongst the members of the society. Now look at the third definition by Alfred Marshall, 1819, who defined economics as the study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. Alfred Marshall was interested in looking at how man in welfare can be improved. To him, economics on one hand was the study of man, and on the other hand, it was the study of how to accumulate wealth and how the wealth can be used to improve on the welfare of man. All the above definitions that we just gone through uh, were, they had some limitations, and those limitations were because they didn't take into consideration all the aspects of economics. The most acceptable definition for economics is that of Lionel Robbins. Lionel Robbins, who defined economics as a social science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. Robbins' definition gave a new idea of thinking about economics. That is about what economics is all about. This is because in the definition, it includes all the main aspects of economics. Let us look at the basic concept in economics. The first one we look at is scarcity. It refers to a situation of permanent insufficiency of economic resources available to satisfy human wants. That is, scarcity means limited in supply relative to demand. If at zero price, the demand for a thing exceeds supply, then such a thing will be considered scarce. This means that scarcity is a relative concept since it relates the extent of people's want to their ability to satisfy them. We look at shortage which refers to a situation of temporal insuff insufficiency of economic resources available to satisfy human wants. That means the quantity demanded is greater than quantity supply at a given price. Now, scarcity is very different from shortage. That is, scarcity is a permanent problem which can be, which cannot be solved, while shortage is a temporal problem which can be solved. Secondly, scarcity affects all society, whether rich or poor, while shortage does not affect all societies. Thirdly, second, uh, scarcity means limited in supply relative to demand, while shortage means excess demand over supply at a given price. Scarcity 
affects all societies, whether rich or poor, while shortage does not affect all societies. Now, let's look at choice. It refers to the act of select selecting from alternative ones to satisfy. That is, because of limited resources, economic agents choose the goods and services that yield the highest satisfaction. For example, the household has to choose between holidays abroad and payment of tuitions for the children. The firm may have to choose between consumer good and capital good, as well as the government may have to choose between constructing a road and providing health care. The selection is only possible if there is a scale of preference. For example, a student may come up with a scale of preference. For example, a student may come up with a scale of preference. As we have, he may have a, a sum of 4,000 francs to buy the following items. Food, which costs 5,000. Transport, which costs 4,000. Registration fees, which costs 20,000. Uniform, which costs 5,000. Exercise books, which costs 15,000. And textbook, which costs 25,000. Now, with this budget of 40,000, this student cannot buy all the items. The student may rank the item as follows. The ranking gives the student scale of preference because the student has, start, has started with the most pressing ones. If you look at the table, you are going to see the first item is registration fees, which is 20,000. Exercise book, uniform, textbook, food, and transport. That means the student has to start from registration fee, exercise book, uniform, textbook. Now, the student may not be able to, uh, to, to buy all the items, so the student will buy what the budget can afford. Now, we look at opportunity costs. It refers to the next best alternative for gun to satisfy human wants. It is also known as true cost or real cost. It comes as a result of the fact that people cannot satisfy all their wants since resources are scarce and therefore must choose between one thing and another so that the satisfaction of one implies sacrificing the other. For example, if a student is faced with the possibility of choosing between six hours of sleep and six hours of studying, in this case, if the student chooses six hours of sleep, then the opportunity cost of the six hours of sleep is the six hours of studies foregone. Now let us look at the importance of studying economics. Economics is very important because it increases the intellectual value of human beings. That is, helping them to realize their interdependence in the fulfillment of their day-to-day -day wants and needs. It also helps a consumer to manage his or her expenditure with respect to the income so as to achieve maximum satisfaction. It helps producers to choose the best option from the available resources so as to optimize the utilization of available resources and maximize profit. It helps businessmen to determine the right price for their product 
give the con given the condition of demand and supply. It helps the government to determine proper monetary and fiscal policies, as well as tax policies, which enables the government to earn the, necess the necessary revenue for building, maintaining, and developing the economy. It provides basic skills of analysis of economic problems and designing solutions. It is a supported, a supported factor to the government to understand the complex problem of unemployment, inflation, poverty, and balance of payment disequilibrium. In our next lesson class, we shall continue with the notion of economics, and then we shall be looking at the various branches of economics, tools of economics, economics as a science. See you in the next class. Unna tege si ma tege yob, unna tege minga ma tege nyum, unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esotina biya jinkido, ma ne tambia.